And now, Mystery Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. And I'm ready, if you are, for another mysterious voyage through the shadowy mist of imagination. You ask, what is the world? And most people will answer, the earth, the universe. But isn't it true that for most people, the real world is a certain house on a definite street in a particular town? And for most people, doesn't the real world consist of perhaps a... uh, 50 or 100 or so faces. And isn't everything and everyone else just a name in a newspaper, an image on a screen, a voice speaking from a small box? Close your eyes. Stop up your ears. And there is no world. I have something to tell you, Harry. Yes? Yes. You have just become the most powerful man in the world. Me? Yes, you. You, Harry Cohen. You have just become more powerful than any dictator, king, or czar. Mightier than any general, emperor, or president. Are you sure you feel all right? And listen, in that terrible storm outside... Yes? You can end it... I say just one word. Say yes, and the storm will be over. You can't be serious. Try it. Say yes, and see what happens. All right. No, no, not all right. Yes. Yes. What did I do? What did I do? mystery drama, The 36th Man, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Ross Martin. Sometimes when we are particularly appalled by the flagrant evil, the unspeakable inhumanity, And the dark ignorance that seems to engulf us constantly, we may ask ourselves, why does the Lord permit this most imperfect planet to exist? Why? Perhaps the answer is written in the old Hebrew legend which tells us that there are, in every generation, 36 human beings whose lives are completely without blemish. And it is for their sake that the Lord allows the world to continue. And since the Hebrew letters Lamed and Vav form the symbols for the number 36, these persons are called Lamed Vovniks. And so long as there will always be 36 of these saintly people in each generation, the world shall not be lost. Our tale begins in the opening years of the 1900s, down in the lower east side of New York City, in a tiny candy store. Harry! Where are you? Harry? Ruth? I was down in the cellar. Oh, you were down in the cellar. I was uh, putting away the empty bottles. Mm -hmm. And while you're downstairs, anybody could come in and walk away with the whole store. Oh, Ruth, the people in this neighborhood are honest. Is that why we're always short newspapers? Well, maybe when we count them, we don't add right. And the candy bars disappear off the counter by magic, huh? Well, you know, sometimes it could be our mistake. Oh, please, give me a You know, rest. the truth is the eye, the human eye, it very often deceives a person. Sometimes you think oh, you see something... Oh, that's enough. Ruth, are you angry? Who, me? Angry? What would I have to be angry about? I'm just trying to explain don't, that... Don't, don't. Whatever you say, it'll be wrong. And I'll lose my temper, I don't want to do that. So just, just keep quiet. I know how much you hate this place, Ruth. 
you want, I can stay here by myself. Oh, sure, sure. I don't want you to come in the afternoons anymore. After all, why shouldn't you be free? Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you so much for my wonderful freedom. Mr. Enrico Caruso and Miss Nellie Melba are singing at the Metropolitan Opera. Now I'm free to use our box seat. Oh, Ruth, I wish I could afford some. And afterwards, I'll be free to join Mr. Diamond Jim Brady and Miss Lillian Russell for supper at Rector's. Please, Ruth. Don't just stand there. Bring in the newspapers, will you? Why? Can't you hear why? But the sun is... The sun was shining so brightly just a minute ago. It's a storm. Hurry before we lose all the papers. Yes, yes, you're right. I'm going, I'm going. Here, here, hand them to me. Why such a storm all of a sudden? Shut the door, shut the door. Oh. Look at these papers. What's the matter? Look at the comic pages. Oh. Half of them torn. Dirty finger marks everywhere. Now, how can we sell... Did you let the kids read the funny papers again? Well... Did you? Oh, but Ruth, most of these children can't afford to buy a newspaper. Who do you think you are? Mr. Andrew Carnegie? Now, how many times do I have to tell you we're not running a free public library? No, I... Get your head out of the clouds. Oh, Ruth, please. Now, you this... can't give away a whole quart of milk in a five-cent mold. I know that. So if you know, why do you do it? These children are so... Poor. Nobody's as poor as we are. A kid shouldn't grow up without a piece of candy now and then. A toy, a funny paper. What? The if you could only hear how the kids laugh when they look at the funny oh, pages. Where do you get this from? This sickness. They're so happy you don't even notice how thin, how scrawny it's they craziness. are. Craziness. It doesn't run in your family. Your brothers are sensible. They're rich, important. Ruth, everything will be all <gasps> I right. Have to pick the lemon. You'll see. Where are you going? In the back. To look through the bills. I don't know why. There's no money to pay them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It isn't easy, is it? No. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear anyone come in. Hello, Harry. You say my name as if you know me. I've been looking for you, Harry. Why would anybody be looking for me? After all, who am I? It's been such a long trip, and I'm so tired. Well, here, please, sit down. Eh? Uh, Can I offer you a little something? Milk or something? Let me look at you, Harry. You're very pale. You're trembling. Mister, are you sick? Let me see if what they said about you is true. There's a doctor just up the block. I think it's true. He doesn't charge much. If you don't have enough money, maybe I can help. All right? I'm very old, Harry. My time is up. Oh, what kind of talk? I'll take you to this doctor. But I can't. I can't leave this world until I find somebody to take my place. Do you understand? Poor old man. What's troubling you? Harry, just tell me. Assure me. That you'll always be just the way you are right now. Tell me, you must. Will you take my place? So? Who are you? Harry! You have to chew the fat with every old bum that walks in? The syrup jars have to be washed. Yes, Ruth, I'll do it. And you, Mr. Bum, this is no flop house. On your way. Oh. Who? Who are you? I'm one of the 36. The 36? There must always be 36 of us, so the world is lost, comes to an end. You you sit here. It'll only take a minute. I'll get the doctor. Each of us, before he dies, must name the man to succeed him. I choose you. Now here, first, you, you drink this, huh? You look very, very... Do you accept? You must try to be calm. Because Mr. I'm dying and I have no successor. The world, the world is ending here and now. The world is ending. Oh, no, no, no. Everything's all right. I it's tell all... you, the world is ending. Uh, look, look, look outside. Have you ever seen a storm like this? Have you? It will destroy the whole world. This excitement, it's not good for you. The world, it's lost unless there is a new 36th man. Take my place. You must do it quickly. Quickly before no, I don't, die. Don't, don't get up. Don't try to get up, please. Say yes, Harry. Say yes. And suddenly there is an end to thunder and lightning, the wind. Suddenly, every cloud will disappear. A 
bright sun will shine in a peaceful heaven. Just rest. I'll try to... Say yes. Only you can save the world. Say yes. Me? Me save the world? Yes, you. Only you can save the world. Harry. Harry, say yes. Harry. Yes, yes. All right, yes. All right now? Yes. Now it's all right. Listen. I don't hear anything. That's right. You don't hear. The storm that was sent to destroy the world stopped in its tracks because of you. Stopped because you just became the 36th man. Uh, Fine, fine. Now, let me take you to the doctor. We must always be 36. And you must never change. Before I die, I have the power to grant my successor one request. Ask for anything. Ask. What? What do you really want in this world? Oh, I would want for people to have enough. No, 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 no. This must be for yourself. What would you really want? (laughs) What I'd really want, if it could somehow be arranged, it would be wonderful. If my wife, Ruth... Well, if she just understood me a little better. Is it all right to ask for that? That's all you want? That's really all I want. Then one day she shall. One day, when you least expect it, she will suddenly understand you. Now, goodbye, Harry. I must leave. Oh, but look at you. You can't even walk. One need not be able to walk in order to leave this world. (laughs) Here, here, lean on me. Ruth, Ruth, quick, help me. Ruth. Goodbye, Lamed Vovni. Goodbye. The old man. The old man. We have to help the old man. The old man. Harry. The old man. Harry, listen to me. Harry, listen to the doctor. The doctor, yes, yes, the doctor. There's this very old man in my store, doctor. No, 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 Harry. We're in the store right now. Now, your wife says you keep shouting for help. Now, what happened? There was an old man here. What old man? He fell to the floor. He said he was dying. I yelled yelled for you to help me. But But there was no old man. Well, you saw him. I saw him? Yes, you saw him. You asked him to leave the store. When was this? When? Five, ten minutes ago? Now, you sure you're not imagining all this, Harry? Now, why should I suddenly he say... too hard, Doctor. He doesn't get enough sleep. He forgets to eat. You mean that... There was no old man? Where is he? He seemed... So... Just like a real person. We talk to each other and he... He just fell dead on the floor. If he fell dead, Harry, where is he? Doctor, did you ever hear of the the Lamed Vovniks? Yes. The old man said he was a Lamed Vovnik. Oh, the old man again. That he had chosen me as his successor. Harry, it was a hallucination. You thought you saw him. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I saw him. He was real. To you? He was in that chair. He was real. He was in your mind. There are new things, Harry. An entirely new dimension of the mind is being opened, explored. I wonder what that Dr. Freud would say. Who? There's a Dr. Freud in Vienna. Something new. He's what they call a mind doctor. I wonder what he would say about your old man. What could he say? He's never seen him. I think I'll write to this Dr. Freud. He's involved with everything that happens inside the mind. But the old man wasn't inside my mind. He was inside the store. No, Harry. I know what I saw. Why are you arguing with the doctor? You can't even run your own business. You're trying to tell him all about his. Look, 
All I'm trying to say... Never this is... mind what you say. Does the doctor say there was no old man? Yes, but then I... Then there was no old man. And that's the end of it. <laughs> Oh, she can say that. But you and I, we know that isn't the end of it. No, sir. If anything, it's only the beginning. You will have to give the devil his due. And I mean that literally when I shall return shortly with Act Two. On the Lower East Side of New York City has just succeeded a dying member of the group, thus keeping the roster at the required 36. Ruth, his wife, refuses to take Harry seriously. However, there's always a first time for everything. And right now, Harry is a shopkeeper on the Lower East Side of New York City, has just succeeded a dying member of the group, thus keeping the roster at the required 36. Ruth, his wife, refuses to take Harry seriously. However, there's always a first time for everything. And right now, Harry is about to be taken very seriously indeed by, um... <laughs> well, since you would never guess, I'll come right out with it. The devil. You don't believe it? I can prove it. The very next voice you'll hear will be Satan himself. Yes. Who? Ah, I suppose you might just as well let her come in. Uh, Prince? Don't use that irritating title. Well, I can't very well call you the king of the universe. You're only the prince of darkness. So far. Your district captain in New York hears that the new Islam Advovnik is in his territory. So? Well, it might present you with a quick way to destroy the world. There is no quick way. Slow and steady is how to go. Now, in eight or ten years, I'm arranging for a war. Mm, there have always been wars. Ah, but this will be a world war. Oh, you've had those before. Ah, but not with these weapons. Oh, the weapons they'll have this time. Now, in about a year, there's going to be an invention called the aeroplane. A machine that flies through the sky. You can drop bombs from it. Destroy entire cities. I'm going to let them invent weapons so awful that one man will be able That's to... That's always been your problem. What problem? Your gadget, Happy. Now, I have a simple plan whereby you can destroy the world this very afternoon. You have? The newest Lamed Vovnik. Yes. Just help him fall from grace, as it were. Impossible. No one has ever been able to get a Lamed Vovnik. Mm, you never asked me to help. Uh, your specialty is wasted. They're mostly elderly men. Long ago, they abandoned the pursuit of earthly pleasure. Or maybe it abandoned them. Mm, this new one is young. Young? I even think he's handsome. Oh, well. This places everything in a brand new perspective. Are you seducing anybody important these days? Oh. A couple of kings, a few presidents, some generals. <laughs> uh, let's go after this one. Uh, what's his name again? Harry. Harry Cohen. Harry? Harry Cohen? Hmm? What? Oh, yes, Ruth. What are you doing there? Oh, I, I was uh, just reading a book. Oh, oh, that's uh, wonderful. Oh, yes, Ruth, it is wonderful. It's a book about bees. Mm -hmm. Bees, this is a new affliction. Shows how bees talk to each oh, other. No, bees talk no. by the way they dance around each other. You may just think it's aimless, buzzing around without rhyme or reason, but every motion means something. And while you've got your nose buried in that book, anybody can come in and walk off with the whole story. Oh, no, Ruth. I was watching. 
Listen. I have to go see my brother. Oh. All right. Say hello to him from... Oh, no. The very mention of your name gives him indigestion. Now, just tell me. Can I trust you not to give away the store while I'm gone? Oh, Ruth. No, no. Don't answer. I'll just have to pray for a miracle. Ruth. I just wish I could make her happy. There it is, Lilith, my dear. The shop of Harry Cohen. You gonna hang around for the kill, Prince? I still say you're not going about it in the right way. Tell you what you do, Prince. You go get yourself an umbrella. Because in five minutes, there's going to be the biggest storm in the history of the world. I hope so. Hello, Harry. Yes, what can I do for you? Did anyone ever tell you how handsome you are? No. Well, you just listen to Mama, Harry, baby. Well, they never told me because it isn't true. I mean, hmm. why should people tell me I'm handsome? As my father used to say, his face is not his fortune. <laughs> you just come here, Harry, honey. Listen, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know your name. Lily, honey. Lily. Mm-hmm. I don't have very much money. Money? No. Oh, sweetie, you said anything about money. But maybe I can help you. Help me? Yes. If you need a few dollars so that you can... So that mm-hmm. you can... Uh, so I can what? So that you can... Quit. Quit? Quit this terrible life you lead. Oh, oh just, just wait a minute, Harry. Lily, I don't judge people. After all, which person has the right? All we can do is help one another, right? I mean, say, who, who do you think you're talking to? I know to? who I'm talking to. A child of misfortune. A child of sorrow. Oh, now, now listen, But it's Harry. not your fault. Something tells me it's not your uh, fault. Harry, just... Maybe uh, you didn't have parents. Harry, relax. Maybe there was no one to love you. No one to teach you. Oh, why not enjoy life, Harry? Yes, exactly. Life is so short. What better way to enjoy it than by helping another human being? Harry, we could have such a good time, you and me. Here, here, a few dollars. It's not much, but it's all I have. You take it. Harry, uh, Harry, you're not listening. First, wash all the paint and powder off mm-hmm. your face, and then buy yourself some nice clothes and get yourself a job. A job? There's a factory right down the street. They make shirt uh, Harry, Harry, let me explain. They something. always need girls. Harry! That's not what It'll I had in mind. It'll change your whole life. You'll feel better. No. Here, take the money. Get a new start. No, no. Are you afraid to break with the past? Foolish girl. The good Lord is so filled with love, with forgiveness. Oh, let me out of here. Let me out of here. Well, I don't see a cloud in the sky. That man isn't human. Ah, but he is. He is. And that's why we will do this my way. Now get rid of those clothes. Hmm? Get an old black dress. Black? A torn black shawl. Put some white in your hair, some lines in your face. You'll be a poor widow, oh, lady. Oh, but I... And make sure that butter doesn't melt in your mouth. Oh, but Prince... I... And don't call me Prince. Excuse me. Hmm? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Uh, uh, how much for these candies? Those? They're two for a penny. Oh, well, uh, I, I would need four because there's Joey and Sarah and Tessie and Benny and... Uh, well, n- n- never th- thank you. Uh, well, don't you want the candy? Uh, well, n- no, no, because I-, I can only spare one penny. You see... Otherwise, I I won't be able to buy milk. You mean you can't spare a penny for candy? Mm, Well, well, not this week. Here. 
You take this. Oh, no. Now take it. Oh, no, no. Why not? Well, because because it's charity and I... Charity, what a beautiful word. It really means love, you know. It's what people should do for each other. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I have my pride. But you have four little children. Shouldn't each of them have a piece of candy? No, not unless I could afford it. Why should they pay for your pride? Huh? Now take it. Come on, just take it. Well... You're new. I haven't seen you before. Well, I, I just moved across the street, top floor. Oh, w what's that book on the counter? It, it looks familiar. Oh, do you read? Mm, well, no. No, m my husband did before he died. Ah, uh -huh. it's a book on philosophy. Oh, yes. That sounds like what he used to read. He must have been an educated man. Oh, yes. He, he was a man like you, very kind, very intelligent. Oh, he would come home from work at night and he would read to me from the philosophy book. Oh, that's what I, I, I miss so much. Well, bye. Goodbye. Where's the record for the syrup? I forgot to keep it. Ruth, what I... do you do all day that you can't keep the simplest figures? I said I was sorry. I'll try to do better. Those books. That's what you're busy with, this junk. Oh, no, Ruth, it's now that's garbage, not Garbage, junk. garbage, nonsense. In any of these books, is there even one word that can tell you how to make a dollar? Ruth, it is written, man does not live by bread alone. I'll make a bargain with you, Mr. Philosopher. You live on books... And I'll live on bread, and we'll see who lives longest. Look, let me read you something beautiful from philosophy. Here, here, listen to this. No, no. You listen. You go home. You eat your supper. You go to sleep. Because six o'clock tomorrow morning, you have to be here to open the store. Oh, but Ruth, I, I just want to read this to All you. All I want in this life is a little peace and quiet. Oh, this is such a beautiful thought. I... I I have to share it with somebody. Leave me alone, will you please? I share too much with you as it is. Just a minute. Good evening. Oh, well, good evening. I, uh, I brought a bottle of milk for your children. Oh, you're so kind. Well, it's nothing. No, it's everything. And uh, and there's this paragraph in, in a book of philosophy that I, I, I'd i like to read to you. Oh, well. Oh, uh, won't you come in? Won't you come in? Never did so devious a spider speak such honeyed words... To sow an unsuspecting a fly. And the battle is on. The ceaseless, the eternal battle between the forces of good and evil. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. You know, of course, that the old Jewish legend tells that the Lord allows this sinful world to continue only because in each generation there are 36 saintly souls called Lamed Vovniks. Should there ever be one less than this required number, the world will be immediately destroyed. Satan, unfortunately, is also aware of the situation, and he has sent Lilith, the seductress, to work her evil charms. The fate of the world hangs on the outcome of the next scene. Won't you, uh, come in? Oh, thank you. My, uh, my children are asleep. And now, thanks to you, they will have milk tomorrow morning. Oh, please, say no more about it. I came, uh, I, I came across this, this passage mm. in a book, and uh, I, I just thought you might like to hear it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, this is what I miss most, just talking, having my husband read to me, explain to me. Your wife, she must be a, a fortunate woman to have a, a man like you. Well... Mm, to have a philosopher, a, a sage for a husband. 
to live with wisdom every day. Oh, well, it was just this passage that I came across. It, it says, It is truth that turns a hovel into a palace, that makes a youth handsome and a maiden fair, that transforms all the base metal within us into pure and shining gold. Hmm. Yes. And there is more than the truth we know. There is the truth we feel, the truth that beats in our hearts. Yes. The truth that pounds in our pulse. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit close in here, isn't it? Harry, hmm? there is this truth between you and me. Uh, I, I think I'd better go. Are you afraid? afraid? No, no, I, I, I just should have been home a long time ago. Where is... Home, Harry. What is home? Well, I, I live... Uh, oh, look, it's starting to rain. Home is where the truth abides. Rain? The moon was shining so brightly before. Oh, don't deny the truth, Harry. Such a rain. All of a sudden, where did it come from? Poor Harry. Bold enough to speak the truth, but too timid to live it. Why are you afraid, Harry? I, I, I'm not afraid. Then no. obey the command of your heart, your senses. What do they command you to do? You, you're so beautiful. Well, then why are you afraid of me? Didn't the poet say beauty is truth? Yes. Come to me, Harry, and learn the truth. Yes. No! No, no, I see you now. I know who you are. No, no. Harry, I know where Harry. the rain is coming from. I'll stop it. I'll stop it. Harry. Harry, you come back here. Harry, come back. Well, another brilliant performance that gets us nowhere, my dear. I give up. He's all yours. Yes, Lily. He's all mine. He doesn't know that yet. But soon he will be all mine. I wish you luck. Not luck. Skill. If you really want a man, you work on his wife. And she has a brother. A wealthy brother. And tonight, he will have a dream. <laughs> doing here? Oh, Ruth, what you just said, it's a knife through my heart. What did I just say? You asked me what I'm doing here, with such, with such surprise in your voice. Well, yes, because, because you never come here. And that's my sin. I have one sister. I never visit her. I never ask myself, does she need anything? Jacob? Jacob, you better sit. Now let me let me get you something to drink, a, li a little soda. Uh, put a little syrup in it. You are sick. I really haven't been a good brother. Yes, that's true. You haven't. But now I'm going to make up for it. You are. My sister, my little sister. <gasps> she isn't going to waste her youth and her beauty in a candy store. Jacob. You want to go in the back, maybe? Lie down? Am I a brother-in-law? Such a splendid person, a man with a heart of gold. That's true. And a brain. Such a brain. Yeah, I'm getting old. I need help. I need a man. A brilliant man who can run my business for me. A man like Harry. No, no, no. Why, what you don't need is a man like Harry. Harry, what a wonderful person. A man in a million. Now he's ready for real responsibility. But Jacob... I want Harry to become my right-hand man. This is Jacob? My brother? Send your husband to see me the first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, it's Harry. Did you go see my brother? Yes. Well? Well, tell me. Did you ever suspect such a thing? Look at you. You're still in a daze. Yes. At his house. 
He lives in a palace. He has five bedrooms. He can only sleep in one of them at a time. Where do you want to live, Harry? Live. Of course, live. We're certainly not going to live in this neighborhood anymore. Why not? Why not? Because we're going to sell the store. Why are we going to sell the store? Why? Well, because... Because... Harry. What did you and Jacob talk about? We talked about a a job, and he... uh... And what happened? What happened? Uh, well, I, I... Well, the way it ended, he threw me out of the house. What? He lost his temper. What did you do? I didn't do anything. What did you say? I didn't say anything. You know, Jacob, he has a very strong temper. Harry, tell me. Everything started at the beginning. Well, when I got there, he was already angry. Why? Because I was late. You see, there was an old man on the car, and he was afraid to travel alone, so I had to go to his stop with him, and then... Just tell me. Well, Jacob said he wanted me to help him take care of his money. And you said... I said, how wonderful. Oh, then you did take the job. Well, what I said was, uh, what a wonderful opportunity to help people. Help people? Well, isn't that the best way to take care of money, Ruth? Feed people who are hungry... Clothe people, send an orphan child to school. I can see where we're going. He laughed. He thought it was a joke. Can you imagine? He said, money isn't something you give to people. Money is something you take from Harry, people. Harry, Harry. He wanted me to learn about money by starting to collect rent. You. And if a person couldn't pay to to put him out. No, now, now, now. You wouldn't have to. No, I said I couldn't. And then he wanted, he wanted me to work in his store. Well... That's better. Better. Ruth, he cheats people. How dare you say that about he my... He charges body. too much. He doesn't give them right weight. So, you're not taking the job. Oh, please, Ruth, please. Please, Ruth. Now she won't talk to me for a whole week. Hello, Harry. Oh, hello, doctor. Well, how are you feeling, Harry? See any more Lamed Vovniks lately? Oh, no, please, Doctor. I don't feel so good right now, huh? Oh, what's wrong? Oh, an argument with my wife. Uh, that's what I came to see you about. Hmm? I got a letter from this specialist in Vienna. An answer from this Dr. Freud. Very interesting. Yes. Now, why do you believe you became a Lamedvovnik? Why do I believe? I know. The old man was here. The storm. He died. Harry, you needed it. I needed it. You manufactured it for your own self-esteem. What does that mean? It means you realize deep inside that you failed your wife. I failed her? All the things she wants, she can't have. Clothes, theater parties, money. Those things, they, they're not important. Not to you, but they mean so much to Ruth. Isn't it more important to help one's neighbor? And so, to give importance to yourself... To convince yourself that what you're doing is right, you make it appear that if you stop letting people walk all over you, then the world will come to an end. But that isn't what I'm doing. It could look that way to somebody else. Besides, Harry, what makes you so sure you're the one who's right? Hello, Ruth. Ruth, please talk to me. Ruth? Why are you handing me this piece of paper? Oh, I see. Harry, I will not talk to you until you go to work for my brother and take your head out of the clouds. All right, Ruth? I'm going. What? Tomorrow morning, I'm going. Harry... You don't mean it? Yes. Yes, I mean it. Oh, Harry. Oh, we'll be so happy. You keep saying, who am I to judge? And yet I judge constantly. Where's it written that I, Harry Cohn, must starve on a crust, freeze in a cellar? No, I've spent the first part of my life giving. I'll spend the rest of it taking. Harry. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. No, 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 
and you won't fool me. The world isn't ending. Harry, what's the matter with your face? My face, my face. It's so, so hard. Well, why do you look so mean? I don't like that look. I've stopped fooling myself. That's all what arrogance. To think I'm one of the Lord's chosen. Rage and howl. I don't believe you. The world will go on. What are you saying? I won't wait until tomorrow. I'll go to him now. The sooner the better. He's a fool. He thinks he knows how to make money. He knows how to sweat pennies from the poor. I'll teach him things he never dreamed of. Harry, no. No, watch. You want money, furs, jewels? An emperor's wife will be a bigger woman beside you. Don't go. You think I'm afraid of that storm? Let's go, me. Let's go. Don't go. Don't go. I don't want you to go. You want? I, I don't like you this way. I don't want you this way. Oh, Harry, why do I make you so miserable? Ruth. Why do I want to change you? I love you just the way you are. Just the way you are. Yes, Harry. Ruth. One day when you least expect it. She will understand you. Your wife will understand you. You're the sweetest person in the whole world. I I don't care if you're not rich, if you're not important. I love you. Oh, look, it's such a nice night. Go upstairs. Get some rest. But you look tired. Yes, Ruth. I am tired. You look at Harry. So tired. You look as if the whole world is resting on your shoulders. And according to what is written in one of the old legends, the world is resting on Harry's shoulders. As an additional thought... If a sudden storm should upset the weatherman's predictions for a beautiful day, remember, someone of 36 people may be having a momentary lapse because, after all, even the saintliest of humans still are human. I'll be back shortly. You may pass him or her on the street without knowing it. You may look at some insignificant, retiring, unimportant person and never know that he, assisted by 35 others, holds your fate, your life, your world. We think the world is saved by the strong, the mighty, the powerful. But no, they can't save it. They can only destroy it. Remember, it is the meek who not only inherit the earth, but maintain it as well. Our cast included Ross Martin, Anne Petoniak, Robert Harris, Carol Titel, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... <laughs>